everybody welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie and uh, I'm continuing the smoky movies right the movies that have the word smoky in the title I'm gonna be honest with you about this one smoky in the hot wire gang which we're covering today from 1979 I believe uh, had never seen this one before and I'm still not sure what I just watched <laughs> Um, this is 100% a drive-in movie. Uh, I, I know through some of these other ones, I've kind of poked fun at some Roger Corman stuff. Because, you know, he's kind of the king of this kind of stuff. But you never realize actually how good, even though they're bad movies, uh, how good his stuff can be compared to some other independents trying to make movies in the same vein. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to talk about Smokey and the Hot Wire Gang. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, going to try to find a synopsis here. Truckers in a convoy keep a CB lookout for women in stolen cars. Really? That's what this person took away from this movie? Uh... Well, at least they got something out of it, I guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that seems a little weak. Let me see if there's another one on here. Make, make a little more sense. Uh, I like this explanation. Hicksploitation, right? This is considered a hicksploitation flick, which I'm probably going to dabble into a little bit. Again, I, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's because it harkens back to me being very young and the, 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 the early days of going to drive-in theaters and watching a bunch of movies that were not big titles, right? You didn't even know what was going to be playing. You just knew it was going to be a, tonight it's movies about race cars, right? And it'd be a couple of flicks that were cranked out over a weekend so you could watch them. That's really where this movie falls. Uh, Hicksploitation, right? Hicks, which is what they call people like myself from Tennessee. Uh, just a bunch of hicks, right? The story is, well, I'll tell you what. Let's back up a little bit. Let's get to some, some actors that are actually in this movie. We got James Keach in this, right? Stacy Stacy Keach's little brother. Uh, he's been in things here and there. Nothing really is a standout for himself. Uh... I don't really know anybody else in this movie except for uh, except for Alvy Moore. Uh, <laughs> Alvy Moore uh, was in Green Acres, right? He was Hank Kimball. Uh, I love Hank Kimball, right? I love Green Acres, and uh, he plays the sheriff in this movie, so he's the Smokey. But there's not really a Smokey in this movie till. I don't know, the last maybe 30 minutes or so. So, again, this is just another excuse to throw the word Smokey in there. And you get somebody that's kind of a known person, just like we had Slim Pickens in the other one. They tried to put a person in the role of the, of the sheriff, the Smokey, and, you know, to kind of carry that role because Jackie Gleason did so great. Here's our version of trying to find somebody in the same vein. Somebody's got a little clout behind them a television star that most people know. That's kind of what you got here. I, I, Again, this movie was probably, and I haven't done any research on this, I literally just got through watching it. And uh, I'm going to say that this movie probably originally was going to be called Hot Wire, but because Smokey is such a big deal and we have a cop in here and you've got a popular person playing, let's just call it Smokey and the Hot Wire Gang, right? Is there really a hot wire gang? Not really. There's a woman named Hot Wire. So everybody calls her. And so the story is, this is the real synopsis of the movie. You get this woman named Hot Wire who uh, is dealing with stolen cars and dealing with prostitution. So <laughs> she's got business coming and going. Da-da-dum-psh, right? Um... 
so she's got the uh, she, she's selling cars to the elite right the rich people come and they want I don't know like a Bentley right so she will have some guys go out steal a Bentley and then they'll do some work to it and sell it to them that's pretty the pretty much the premise of what this movie is so she's dealing with this kind of work and it's hard to explain this movie because there's so many people in this movie that really have nothing to do with it they keep introducing characters in different cars and the CB lingo is just out of control in this movie right again this is that hitting that that high mark of CB radio frenzy so you've got let me let me just try to recap here of who all we have we've got a dude in a Porsche two guys in a Porsche right they're running from the law at the beginning of the movie and they call the main guy Gemini why no idea just sounds cool I guess but he's driving a, a silver Porsche very sharp especially for 79 this is a this is a bad car you got a couple of prostitutes that are working on their own driving around in a souped up Winnebago hitting tr uh, trucker parking lots and you know doing the deed making the money you've got uh, James Keach and his partner who are kind of the uh, the bad luck criminals right they're trying to make a big score but all they do is end up shooting themselves in the foot all the time they're not good at what they do and they're just looking for a big break and of course everything they do it's like the car is going to run out of gas or they get a flat tire or, you know they're that kind of scenario right so that's their that's their role in this you get uh you get you got these guys in this souped up van you know very 70s looking van with you know airbrushed artwork on the sides of it and stuff big deal at the time right those vans were, were a hot thing back then um, their van gets stolen right and so there's the pursuit of that which matter of fact it's stolen by James Keach and his partner then there's <laughs> again there's so much stuff there's a there's an armored truck that gets robbed by some guys that were hired by Hotwire to you know knock it off take the money she found out about it because she was sleeping with this guy who apparently knew about what was going to happen or was in charge of it or maybe one of the people to even you know escorting the money I don't know uh, about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars I think is the the loot that they're getting out of this you've got the sheriff who's riding along with a guy that's in a almost like a dirt track you know speed car right it's got the it's got the the fin on the top to uh you know for for high speed right super fast car the guy driving it's just like captain america <laughs> i mean you know so again it's just it's all over the place and uh the, so the sheriff's riding with this guy because he's a speed driver and they're trying to catch somebody but when it starts off you really have no idea who they're chasing i think they're chasing jim and i in the, in the porsche right that's where that kind of starts and again it's weird because all these different things start tying into each other uh there's another uh, another group of guys with another prostitute and she gets hung up with the the gang that's hired by uh hot wire to knock off the armored car i mean it's just I don't know I really don't know what all I just saw I can't piece it all together but at the end of the day you know they knock off the armored car for hot wire and then James Keach and his buddy end up knocking those guys off and taking the money in the stolen van that's got the airbrush on it and then they're all being pursued by the people they stole the van from who's now in the Winnebago with the two prostitutes you know, again, it's just it just turns into a big road chase of everybody's chasing everybody for a different reason, and it all comes to a head just like it's supposed to. And um, at the end of the day, um, 
it's James Keach who crashes the van. Just like I said, they're bad luck. Slings his partner out the back door and all the money falls out. Then he, he crashes the van and gets stuck. And so now they're on foot, but they, they only grab a couple of bags of the money because they're being chased by the Winnebago with the people that own the van. So they get a couple of bags, which is about $30,000, and they're just on foot, and they get away. Another car of the henchmen that got knocked off before pull up, pick up all the money in this car, and uh, they make their way back close to where uh, Hot Wire is. They're supposed to get on this yacht to, to get out of there because, you know, to get the money away because it's stolen. That's where they're meeting her at. Well, while they're there, Gemini and his partner show up. And they steal all that money and lock up the guys that were guarding the car while the other guys go and tell Hotwire, hey, we've had some trouble. We got knocked off and we got some of the money. We don't know how much it is, yada, yada, yada. So there's a story of that, right? So uh, at the end of the day, Hotwire gets busted and they. Uh, I guess they confiscate whatever money is left over and then we see James Keach and his partner at the racetrack and they lost all their money because just like idiots they went and spent thirty thousand dollars you know gambling <laughs> and that's pretty much this movie so why is it called Smokey and the Hot Wire Gang no idea again it's just to sell the movie because you had, you know, things like the Apple Dumpling Gang, you had Smoke in the Bandit, you had Breaker Breaker, you had all these movies that were road flicks, right? So, Ben, this is called a Hicksploitation, really surprises me, but, you know, the two Hicks are James Keach and, and his partner, right? That's pretty much the gist of this movie. Uh, the only way I could find this, I don't know that there's a decent print anywhere, but, uh, I saw this on YouTube, so if you want to check this out, it's a little hard to find, but uh, it's on YouTube if you want to check it out. If you feel like a completist and you have to see all these movies, which is basically what I'm doing, again, never even heard of this one, which surprises me because I love this era of movies, so um, there you go. I, I, it's really not a good movie. It's got some really shaky editing in it as far as splicing you know, movie scenes together and stuff. Um, yeah, not not a great movie. I, I'm gonna give this a, I'm gonna give it a two out of five. Um, it's probably a little better than that, but I, uh, to me, this movie just seems like it's drags. It's only an hour and 23 minutes long too, so it's a short movie, but it seems like it goes on a long time because you're constantly trying to figure out what you're seeing and who you're with and all that kind of stuff. So makes it a little difficult but uh again i still have a soft spot for these movies that came out this time but uh i don't know i kind of have to tip the hat to roger corman because i think he had a better grip on what made a movie more entertaining so there you go folks that's my take on it uh check it out if you want to like i said if it's on youtube if somebody needs a link to it i can throw one out there on my facebook page which is dr movie so if you want to join along on the ride, you can join me there. You can join me on Instagram. I've got two pages on Instagram, Dr. Movie 1 and Dr. Movie 2. Also on Twitter, you know, TikTok, Waddy Pack, Give a Dog a Bone, all those things, it's out there, right? So uh, there you go, folks. Uh, check this one out, and we will come back with another movie real soon, and we will check you later.